Hello everybody, it is Murr from the TV show Impractical Jokers. I am here at the Harper Collins headquarters in New York City with my lovely, handsome British co-writer Darren Wearmouth. How are you, sir? I'm very good. How are you? I'm good. You're great. I'm excited. Right? So am I. This is, you know, something crazy. We've been planning on, we've been working in our butts off for the past, gosh, year, year and, and a half? half? Yep. Year and a half on this moment, and to have it here is really special. Uh, and uh, if you don't know the whole history of the book, I'll give you a little brief uh, summary of it before uh, we jump into it. We're signing autographed copies of the book together, which is very unusual because we live an ocean apart. Uh, so it's going to be very cool. By the way, before I even start to tell you anything and go through all these fan questions, I'll tell you, if you want an autographed copy of the book from both Darren and I, we are doing them right now today. Go to premiercollectibles.com, premiercollectibles.com slash awakened novel. And Darren and I will personalize it for you right today, right here today. Okay. So if you don't know the backstory of the, of the book, this is a thriller. It takes place in the subways of New York City. It is a scary, tense, ticking clock kind of thriller. It takes place in the subways. I wrote this 14 years ago. I spent a year of my life writing this novel as I was commuting back and forth. Uh, from I lived in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn at the time, and I was traveling an hour and 15 minutes each way to get into Manhattan to my job and back and forth. And I was terrified by, uh, back then, like 15 years ago in New York City, the subway tracks were such, and they still do them now, but where uh, if, the, uh, if the train lost connection to the rail, the entire car would be plunged into darkness. And sometimes you'd be traveling home drunk late at night, and uh, I would be in a car alone, and it would be in pitch blackness for like 10, 15, 20 seconds. And it's scary as hell. And my mind started to imagine what it would be like in that kind of claustrophobic atmosphere, what else is in the subway system. And that's where the idea for subway, for uh, subway, that's where the, the idea for Awakened began. And uh, I spent a year writing it. The guys and I were not on TV yet. We had no, you, if you know our backstory, we are regular guys. We're friends from high school. We didn't have any cousin in the business, no uncle that connected us. We didn't audition for Jokers. We created it. And we just worked really, really hard to get it. And same thing with this. I, so 14 years ago, I sent this book out to publishers and literary managers and agents. And, and it got returned to me unopened by 100% of them. They didn't even read it because I wasn't in the business. I didn't have an agent or anything, anybody representing me. So, um, uh, you know, it was uh, the come one of those things that in life you work so hard on something and then to fail without even being, being given the opportunity for your work to be seen is, is heartbreaking. And uh, I kind of internalized that for a long time. Fast forward to Impractical Jokers and our fan base and how amazing you guys are. And I was able, I got this into the hands of HarperCollins. They loved it, bought it immediately, and they bought the trilogy from Darren and I as well. And uh, I partnered with this gentleman right here, who is a best-selling author in thrillers and horrors himself. Check out his books, by the way. Go to DarrenWearmouth.com to check out everything he's written. Some of the great ones. My favorite is First Activation. So check him out. He's a, an accomplished author. So I partnered with him. He whipped this bad boy into shape. And we, we kind of modernized it, changed a few things, straightened some stuff out. And, and here we are. Now we're at the publishing date. The book comes out on Tuesday. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, after... All the time we've been doing this, um, we, the, the events organising the uh, the thing at Charles Street tonight, mm -hmm. um, the book, seeing it come to fruition, the cover, and now it's finally here after all the hard work is is amazing. What, what Darren's referring to there is the awakened experience. So, you know, my, my background is in TV and movie. You know, we, the guys and I just shot the Impractical Jokers movie, which comes out next year. So um, we're thinking about ways to really make the book launch special. And here's what we came up with. Since the book is written like a movie or like a, uh, the very best episodes of 24, the TV show, we're like, what if we build the, the most iconic scenes from the book? Those scenes being uh, the subway car. At the beginning of the book, the subway car rolls into the station. It's like a brand new subway system called the Z Train. The subway car rolls into the pavilion. All the windows are shattered outward. The cars are covered in blood and the passengers are missing, including the mayor's wife. So it's this great rush, uh, you know, uh, frantic rush for the passengers. Are they still alive? Can we get out of the tunnel in time? So we built the train where the mystery starts. Then we built the subway tunnel itself where the railroad ties are splintered and torn into pieces. There's all sorts of debris laying around. There's blood. There's a, uh, a hole in the track. There's all sorts of creepy things going on in the subway tunnel as well. And then we built... The creature's nest as well, which is underneath New York City. So, kind of like a haunted house where you go from room to room to room. 
We partnered with the best haunted house builders and makers in New York City, Blood Matter. If any of you live in New York City, you've been to Blood Matter because everyone goes on Halloween. It's the scariest thing around. So we partnered with them. They took the book and made it come to life. So you go through from room to room to room experiencing what you're reading. And then at the end of the experience, you get a copy of the book signed by Darren and I. We take pictures with you. We'll give you a big hug. And then afterward, we go out to the after party uh, <laughs> and, and party. So the uh, awakened experience, if you want to go through that, you get a copy of the book before it even comes out on Tuesday. Uh, you go to awakenednovel.com, awakenednovel.com, and you can get tickets to the Awakened Experience. Come tonight. It's tonight, tomorrow night, and, and Sunday night in Manhattan. Uh, you come any night you want. You choose the time you want to go uh, and show up, and, uh, and that's it, and you're rocking and rolling. It's going to be so much fun. It's a book launch unlike, I think, any that's ever been done, especially for a, a first-time author like me. Um, it, it's, it's, a, it's just a, such a cool thing to do to actually – bring a book to life visually and audibly uh, and actually to go through it and feel it and see what it's like for the passengers and the people trapped in this book. So there you go. Check that out. We're here's what we're going to do today. It's going to be very fun. We're going to go through lots of questions that you guys have submitted. Uh, if you go to premiercollectibles.com slash awakened novel, buy a copy. You can submit a question for Darren and I. We're going to go through lots of questions while we're autographing copies of the book. And, uh, and we're going to play a, com a couple of fun games too for you. And we might... FaceTime one of you as a surprise. So if you're buying a copy of the book, maybe include your phone number as well, and uh, and I might FaceTime you. If you have an iPhone, I will FaceTime you live and, uh, and you know, say hi to your grandma <laughs> or give you a happy birthday message or high five your cousin, whatever you want me to do. So um, why don't we jump into stuff? Is that cool? Do you want to start going through some questions as we sign some uh, some books? Yeah. This is, you got to love the book, by the way. It's, it's tense, taut thriller. Uh, it's not insanely scary that you're like, oh my god, I can't read. It's too gross. It's not, not like that. It's it's psychological. It's got monsters in it, but it's very exciting. You'll fall in love with the characters. The characters are interesting and flawed and exciting, and they overcome their set themselves and the situation they're in. And it's got great, great conspiracy and drama in it. And uh, and it, it the book wraps itself up. It's a, it's a complete tale, but. It leaves it open to book two and three, and there's a great kind of mystery and conspiracy at the end that you will love. Uh, so that's 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 a summary of uh, a, a book, basically a little bit of uh, a, a tease about the book. So why don't we jump into some questions? We'll go through, we'll autograph some yeah. copies. Is that cool? Yeah, that's right. cool. Okay, let's okay. do it. What do we got, Darren? Okay, um, these are the questions from people who've already bought um, from uh, collectibles. Uh, Carly from Portland in Oregon would like to know. What would be your advice for fans on how to achieve their dreams, uh, like writing a book like you did? Oh, uh, we have interesting backgrounds, right? I mean, mm. Darren was in the military in the UK and has a very interesting background. And, and t tell us your your way into uh, writing and how it started for you and, and any lessons you learned. And I'll tell you what I've learned from Dip. Okay, I mean, I, I've always liked stories, fiction, English. Um, I mean, I, I was in, in the military, as James says, went through college with those. Um, then started with corporate technology. Um, I worked away a lot. I was in hotels and bed and breakfasts, working in remote locations. And I had a choice of, um, well, you can you can eat and drink there, and you, but obviously that's not sustainable in yeah. the long term. Um, you could go to the gym, and I get massively bored at gyms, um, on treadmills, and, um, or I could pick up a hobby. And I like writing, I, I started to do it, and I found I, I really, really enjoyed it. And I, I put out my first book, and it, it went a lot better than what I thought so I mean that's kind of what led me here what about yourself that, 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 that's that's great I love that you wrote your first book and it just took off yeah. my experience was the same <laughs> <laughs> I failed for a dozen years before anybody yeah. wanted anything so he uh my experience my here's what I'd suggest for somebody that's starting out I think the um the lesson from writing a book and then not being able to get anybody to read it but not giving up on it is an important one because in Practical Jokers the same way, right? The guys and I have been friends since 1990. We met in high school freshman year. We were 13 years old. And um, we, after a college, we formed our comedy troupe at the Tenderloins and we tried for years, years to get a TV show, to get somebody to pay attention to us. We performed live for many years. We shot sketch comedy at the Tenderloins. We, we um, created other TV shows. We sold a couple TV shows, none of which went to series. We shot a pilot for Spike TV, didn't go to series. We shot a, a, a pilot for A&E, didn't go to series. The, and then Impractical Jokers was our third television show. The lesson from Awakened and from Impractical Jokers, I think, is this. Don't give up. Don't stop. 99% of people 
give up when they get rejected from something. If you believe in something, if you love it, if you feel it, if you be good at it, of course. If you suck at it, you know, all, all this goes out the window. Be good at it and just keep going. Keep going. Don't stop. Don't take no for an answer. And if anything, make the rejection fuel you to be better mm. and to succeed and to yeah. want to succeed that much harder. Yeah, I think that's, that's, that's very good. I, I completely agree with that. So, Mike from Windermere. I'm going to start signing these bad boys. Yeah. <laughs> um, if, if you can sign in, I'll ask these questions. Um, Mike from Windermere in Florida um, would Thanks. like you would like oh to. Oh, my God, know. I got a snapple. Uh, Thank you. Lisa. This is Lisa Sharkey. She's my one of my favorite people at HarperCollins. Hi, Lisa. How are you? Hi, Caroline. So, I'm the Snapple delivery. Person. This is not sponsored by Snapple. It's just a delicious, delicious beverage made here in Long Island. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't know Snapple was from there. Yeah, there you go. It's like a uh, hometown. Do you have Snapple in England? Uh, yeah, I think I think we do have it. You do? Yeah, or, or a version. Of, I'm not, either that or I've had it here. I mean, I know what Snapple is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. That was actually part of the fun of writing the book together, like, like oh, polishing yes. together. Like Darren would send me like a he he'd go through a chapter, revise it, and he'd I'd read it. I'm like, what the hell does that word mean? What is it? And he'd be like, I don't know. It's a cheeky. I don't know. He's like all sorts of <laughs> weird words that don't mean anything in America. Yeah. You know. I used to, I, I mean, without digging too much into what what um, what what the whole process was, because you, you, it would probably bore you. Um, I used to love getting some of the comics back. <laughs> what is that? I don't know. Is yeah. So Darren took some classes in how to speak American, and now we have a complete book. I'm kidding. Y'all. Y'all. <laughs> uh, okay, so what you got, sir? Right, um, uh, this is from Mike in Windermere, Florida. How has it been switching gears from comedy to horror? Um, and follow up, um, uh, tell us about this new venture as an author. Oh, it, it, it has been a seamless transition. Why? Because my job in Impractical Jokers is horrific at times. Mm -hmm. It really is. I am terrified on a daily basis, especially on punishment days. We just finished shooting the, the, the Jokers movie. Oh, man. There were some things that were so scary and funny, but scary. Also, I mean, we scared the hell out of Sal. I can't tell you what happens. You'll find out in theaters next year, but we scared the hell out of him. So I found it... Here's what I say. Creativity is creativity. You know, I think it's um, the guys and I all have so many interests. Q has a graphic novel he's putting out now. Um, go to his Twitter feed and find out about it and please help him fund it. Uh, he, he is a huge comic book fan. He writes comic books. So he has this whole other world of, uh, that he wants that he writes and he writes it very well. Joe, of course, does a ton of work for charity and for anti-bullying and for pet adoption, and Joe will one day write a children's book. Sal, of course, is on tour as a solo stand-up comic, and he's excellent at it. So we all have different creative interests, and um, what brings us, what bonds us together is is, uh, is each other, we, our friendship, and, um, and in Practical Jokers, we create that together. We will always be in Practical Jokers. We'll do that for many, many more years from, to come. We'll tour together for many years to come, but we all still have our creative guys. We love to express ourselves in different ways. So I think that the creative gene translates no matter what you yeah, know I, I don't I think agree. it really is a di there's no difference between um writing this or writing comedy or you know i feel like it's the same kind of expression of creativity so um so they, it's been pretty easy to try to to to, to transition into this and yeah. uh, you know gosh I and mean, we we bonded over so many of the same horrors and thrillers i mean that's what the guy i mean even the guys and i too like you know i grew up watching uh nightmare on elm street um friday the 13th uh aliens you know these are just like our favorite favorite movies from growing up and and inspired this whole side life of uh, a side interest in horror for me so yeah um i liked some practical jokers before i started working on this and when me and james first spoke his name appeared on my screen it was, it was strange just <laughs> look it's Bert. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah when we started talking it was um it was amazing how much similarities we had like at similar age and, and growing up and yeah yeah, um, I will say you have excellent taste in comedy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. You've got excellent taste in um, coffee choices. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We're such humble guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this Sandy from um, Council Bluffs in Iowa. Um, Council she, Bluffs. Yeah, yeah, she said, um, have you ever considered doing stand-up comedy? Uh, I, only in a very specific way. Uh, you know, Sal, that's been Sal's interest his whole life, and he's very good at it. Um, I the only way I would do stand up I think I have an idea for what I would do if I were ever to do a show I no joke keep a list of the 10 most embarrassing things that have ever happened to me some of them are impractical jokers but many are not most actually are not on the list they're almost they're so embarrassing the guys know they're so embarrassing 
I don't even know if I could ever tell it on stage, but if I were to do a stand up comedy show, I think it would be like that. I think I would take the audience through my 10 most embarrassing moments because they are hysterically embarrassing and funny. So if I were to ever do something like that, that's what I would do. So. That would be cool. Yeah. Um, Amber from Reading in Pennsylvania. Um, how does it feel to be a new author? Uh, it feels great. It feels great. It's one of those things that, uh, like I said before, uh, if any of you out there are creative, if you ha have an interest in doing something in the creative fields, you know, or an actor, if you're a writer, or a performer of any kind, you know what rejection is like. So much of TV development uh, for me, you know, my, my job outside of Jokers is for the past decade, I've run development for a TV company. Uh, so my job is to literally create and sell and pitch TV shows. And, um, and I have probably pitched thousands of shows and got rejected thousands of times and in my my love life the same the same thing <laughs> so the, the point is this you 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 um that rejection becomes so much a part of your life that to actually create something that goes um i i, I was saying to darren last night at dinner uh, this today feel uh, last night felt like the day before impractical jokers premiered on true tv the night before i was uh, i was roommates with joey at the time and i said to joe i was like the show tomorrow the show premieres this is i'm back going back to 2011 tomorrow night the show premieres is going to be on tv one way or another friday morning the network may cancel us it's entirely possible right shows get canceled all the time in one day and uh, i said but we will always have tomorrow night nobody can take take away from us the fact that we failed for the past 15 years of, of our lives but tomorrow night we will have succeeded we created something got it on tv and we succeeded and I felt like that last night. I had that gutter inst feeling last night, too, mm. that it was the night before. I mean, of course, the book comes out on Tuesday, but still, the experience this weekend leading right into the book launch, it's all part of the same kind of effort. I had that feeling last night that, like, maybe nobody reads the book. Maybe I, people hate the book. I think you'll love the book. I really believe you will. But we will always have this. We'll always have the experience. We'll always have Tuesday's launch. We'll always have uh, Thursday's launch in the UK. It'll exist. You know, and for a creator to have something that you've created, go get out there. People read it and experience it themselves is is truly the goal of why that's the reason you create to begin with. So um, it feels great. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. OK, that's good. Um, Brandon from um, Visalia in California. I hope I've said that right. Um, he just wants to thank you for coming to Fresno. And, hey, you were and, just there last week. Yeah, and you made his daughter's day. Oh, tell, hi guys, thank you. Thank you for coming to the show. That was one week ago. We finished filming the Impractical Jokers movie that afternoon. No joke, we were on three flights that one day. Because we, we flew uh, to a uh, town in California to film the punishment of Impractical Jokers, uh, the movie, I can't tell you what it is. Then we flew to Fresno right before the show performed, then we flew right over Fresno. My, my body was falling apart by the end of the night. It was a great show. The crowd in Fresno, it was our first time performing there. The crowd was, was unbelievable. It was great. So thanks for coming. Okay, um, Susan from Valley Village in California would like to know, if you were stranded on an island and you could only take- Stand Island. Yeah. yeah. One food, one song, one book, and one person, who would it be? Oh my gosh. Well, I'm not taking Sal. That's for sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. One, uh, you, you, what's your answers? Uh, one food. Um, uh, I'd take uh, buffalo wings. <laughs> uh, one song. Um, uh, something by Oasis, I imagine. Oh, good. Uh, good, very yeah. good. Uh, what, no, I'll, t I'll take a CD. Uh, what's the story, Morning Glory? I'm, I'm cheating. Um, one book. Um, I would take the Don't say Awakened. We can't say Awakened. <laughs> Uh, probably The Martian by Andy Weir. Oh, um, good. That's a kind of stranded tale. Anyways, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We could live in, me and um, uh, the main character could uh, live in hope together. Um, mm -hmm. And the one person who I'd have with Don't me. Don't say me, because um, I'm not taking you. There's one person I would have with me stranded on a desert island. I, mean, I wouldn't want anyone to suffer, so it's not going to be someone I like. Yeah, so it, keep that in mind. It's a death sentence for whoever it is. You I'd probably pick somebody that I, I don't actually like. <laughs> <laughs> spend your days. Now like, you're allowed to say me. <laughs> spend your dying days just arguing. Yeah, oh my god! That's oh my god! So you, and by that right, by that logic, I should take Sal. It would just be him and I torture each other for yeah. forty years. You climb up and get that coconut. Yeah, you know you climb. <laughs> You're not pulling your weight around here. Yeah. Um, for me, I would take what was it? Food. Yep. Food. I would take um, chicken noodle soup, a low sodium. Because if you keep in mind that you're going to be eating this every day, 
So you're not thinking this through, my friend. If you eat chicken wings every day, you will die within three months. You'll <laughs> die. You have to get a balanced food that has the nutrients you need. That you, everything it's got to be balanced because you eat anything every day, three meals a day for six months, you die. Right? Really? I think low sodium chicken noodle soup does answers all these questions. It's got vegetables in it. It's got chicken protein in it. It's all good. Low sodium. I think you can live for a while on <laughs> good soup. Just does a doner kebab work the same? You know, with what's the, that? A doner kebab with the salad and the pizza and the meat. Would yeah. that work? Yeah, yeah that would work. What is that work you're saying? What? Is, does that work the same as doner kebab bad boy? What was that first thing you said? Donna kebab. kebab. Donna kebab? Yeah. What is a Donna kebab? It, it's a uh, shaved pieces of lamb in a pizza bread with salad, you know, hot chili sauce, garlic this is, mayonnaise. This is, this is why we're good teammates. <laughs> <laughs> so sure. Uh, in terms of a uh, what song, yeah. I would bring um, uh, Frankie Valli and the Four Seasons, Can't Take My Eyes Off of You, my favorite song ever. Mm -hmm. I can listen to that uh, endlessly. Uh, person. Uh, oh, gosh. Nicholas, Nicholas Cage? Uh, no, because I want to. I want to get. Excuse me. Can I say this? I want to get laid. You know, <laughs> <laughs> this is my face, but I can say that. You know, I mean, maybe like Rosario Dawson. You know, I mean, what are we gonna do with Nicholas Cage? He's great. We're not. What are we gonna do? Talk about Con Air for the rest of our lives? No. Yeah, you know, right. I, need, I need some kind of possibility of something, right? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, I get what you say. Yeah, you see what I'm saying, right? Yeah, yeah. And then uh, in terms of uh, what was the other question? Oh, what book? I would bring uh, How to Escape from a Deserted Island uh, by dummy, uh, for Dummies. Yeah. You know, or like How to Build a Fire for Dummies. I don't yeah. know. A hammock, anything. Um, okay. Um, Elizabeth from uh, Princess Anne, Maryland, mm -hmm. would like to know what would be... Who's your... Maryland? Yeah, Maryland. <laughs> how, how do you say it? Maryland. Maryland. <laughs> Maryland. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be worse at it. That's not going to be the first. No, his, his accent, <laughs> as he drinks, his accent gets worse and worse. By by the end, he came to the uh, Madison Square Garden show with the guys that I had. By the end of the night, I could not understand my co-writer. It was just nonsense. Babble. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Jessica from uh, Pennsylvania is available on FaceTime now. Oh, she is. Can we FaceTime her? Oh my gosh, this is exciting. Jessica, huh? Just, 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 just I'll do it. Here we go. Jessica, let's see. Let's see. Okay, oh my gosh. I'm going to turn her volume up and the brightness up. Oops, I just let me minimize the screen. Let me turn the brightness up. And okay, here we go. FaceTime, turn the brightness up. There we go. Let's see if she picks up. I'll, I'll, I'll face it kind of this way so you can see. 10 bucks you should pick up. Ah! Hello? Hey, Jess, it's Mar and Darren. How are you? And there's the whole world. How are you? You don't crash your car, girl. Pull over. How are you? I'm good. There's about. There's, I'm not gonna put any pressure on you, but 14 million people are currently watching this broadcast. So. Oh my goodness. So, so say how to 14. Oh, oh, wait, it's up to 17 million. Oh my goodness. Okay. How are you? Where do you live? I love Reading, Pennsylvania. I, I go to I, I go to Hershey Park every summer. Pass right through Reading. Oh yeah, yeah, that's really close to where I live. <laughs> oh, there you go. So, uh, so uh, are you an Impractical Jokers fan? Oh yes. <laughs> she, she's like, what Impractical Jokers? What's that? Um, who's that? You don't have to say me, just because we're on Facetime. Who, who, what's your, who's your favorite on the show, and what's your favorite punishment on the show in, in the show history? What, what, what prescription are your glasses? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> kidding. I love you. So, God, I, what's, uh, what's your favorite punishment on the show ever? Well, I, I felt bad that you were really afraid of it, but my favorite punishment was the skydiving because I've always wanted to do that. Uh, the exact term is crydiving. <laughs> when you do it like I do it, you're crydiving, not skydiving. And uh, do you, have, have, you already, have you already bought a copy of Awakened? Have you already bought a copy of Darren Lai's book? Oh, yes, of course. You did? Uh-huh. <laughs> Very exciting. Are, are, are you excited to read it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm a huge horror fan. Yeah. So, do you, do yeah. you, uh, do you want, can I read you uh, an excerpt now real quick? Is that okay? Oh, my gosh, sure. <laughs> okay, ready? I'm going to read you an excerpt. Here we go. Uh, enough, Samuel said. There you go. What would you think? <laughs> <laughs> You're hilarious. 
<laughs> thank you. Well, listen, I love you very much. Uh, thank you so much for buying the book from Darren and I. We, we, can't, we can't tell you how much it means to us. And, and, uh, and thank you for buying like five more copies for your friends <coughs> and family you as gifts. You, you, have a, you have a question for us? What's your question? My question is, um, which sci-fi or horror movie would you be in and why? Oh, my gosh. Good question. And, and like what role would we play or something? Wow! If you could be in any horror sci-fi movie, what uh, what movie would it be? And what would you, who would you play? Uh, I think I play R two D two. You know, it suit my suit my looks quite oh well. <laughs> Been inside that very tin, cool. tin like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's very funny. That's awesome. Uh you, oh wow! You just you just opened up a whole other world for me. I'm thinking horror. I didn't even think about like that. Uh, gosh, you know what? Neo from The Matrix would be amazing. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, my God. That would be amazing. Would you, could, would you consider Superman sci-fi? I mean, he's an alien. Yeah. Right? One could argue that's sci-fi, right? So, I mean, Superman would be pretty badass, too. Uh, Matrix, you know. It, it might also be fun to um, uh, to be Jason from Friday the 13th, part two. That would be wild. Hellraiser. Cool. Yeah, that's too well, freaky. I, I, you know. Yeah, that's right. I've already I've already been Dracula, she said, which is very true. You've already seen me be in a, in a church choir singing as Dracula. So. All righty. Well, look, we, we love you very much. Thank you for, for buying the book, and I hope you enjoyed You Go on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, post a review. Let me know what you think and tag us in it so we can read it, okay? Oh, sure, yeah. Thank you so much for talking with me. You got it. Okay, take care, and I'll tell you you send your love, too, okay? Oh, thanks. You got it. Bye. Bye. She's out of her mind with Q. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I love him. He's such a he's a great guy. My best friend. Okay. Uh, so where what were we, we up to? Uh, so Elizabeth, um, what would you be a dream job if you were not on Impractical Jokers? Uh, in an alternate universe, uh, I am an architect. I've always been fascinated with architecture. It's a lot of the books I read is about that. Let me grab some of these from you, sir. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, I think I would I would probably be an architect. I love building. I love thinking of puzzles and solving puzzles. Thank you, sir. Solving puzzles. So I think um, I think I'd probably be an architect. How about you? A dream job. Um, I think I'd like to work at a, a food factory. You know, just as a taster at the end of the line, sitting with my feet up. You know, just pulling up an occasional cake. And I don't think that's a job. It, what? It, it, it could be a job. You want to sit. I, I, you want to sit at the end of a factory line where they make cake. Yeah. And a, drinking a beer and t and. S occasionally grabbing a cake off the assembly line before it gets shipped out to the masses? Yeah. This is not a job. I said architect. You, your job doesn't exist. It's your a, job... No, but it's a dream job. <laughs> oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. You're right, it's a dream job. I forgot. Yeah. It's, yeah. Not, it's your dream. I can't... It do, far be it for me to crush your dreams. Don't my dreams. dreams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 don't crush my dreams, Murray. <laughs> you're right, it's your dream job. There you go. Okay. Um... <laughs> Uh, did you enjoy shooting a movie more than doing the TV show? And what is your favorite memory with the Jokers? And this is from Jennifer from Winter Garden in Florida. Uh, good question. Did I enjoy the movie more, uh, more than... No, I didn't enjoy it more than the TV show. I, cer it was, I certainly enjoyed it as much, but it, is, it was completely different than the movie, it, uh, than the TV show. The TV show uh, is, you know, we've been doing it for eight years now, and um, we have it down to a rhythm. You know, it's the same crew. We, we, we uh, honestly, the same people have worked on a show for years and years and years. So you walk and said it's like walking into your family. You know, um, so you have a shorthand with them. The guys and I know how to make the show very well. At the, by this point, um, we know how what we have to get, where we, how far we can push in scenes, and and um, it's just it just goes very smoothly. The movie is is was such a different world. Um, because, you know, we film Impractical Jokers, we film the whole season. We do like 26 episodes over 10 months, over the year. We're filming constantly, you know, throughout the year. The movie is condensed to six weeks. You've got six weeks to film an entire movie. And the movie is a, um, it's a hybrid. It's, it's, uh, it's Impractical Jokers, of course. So the, the movie is a, a cross-country hidden camera movie. So it's real. But it has a narrative beginning and end that sets us on this, jer this real journey competing in hidden camera challenges. Those semi-soft scripted parts at the beginning and the end were very hard to do. We, we're not from that world. So it, you know, I just wasn't, I guess the, I wasn't used to the hours 
you know, we'd be on set for, I mean, you and I talking mm. during the time, yeah. we'd be on set for 14, 15 hours working. Um, some days we were 18 hours. Uh, the last week of shooting the movie, they were overnight shoots because they were nighttime scenes. So we'd get up to set at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and get off set at 8 o'clock in the morning, 9 o'clock in the morning the next day. So you're working through the night with one lunch break, and that's it, more lunch break at, at 2 in the morning. And um, it was an endurance test, i got to tell you. Uh, if we are ever fortunate enough to make a second Impractical Jokers movie, I, I, I am going to clear my schedule for two months and do nothing else I'm going to pause life and just because you can't do anything else. And I guess I didn't realize that because I'm still trying to juggle a lot of things and it's impossible. Um, it was amazing. It was amazing and fun and a dream come true. Uh, you know, I, I've had the same five goals my whole life, five things I wanted to do. And making a movie with the guys was, was one of the five. I mean, probably one of the top ones. And um, and we had, like the book, we, we tried to get a movie off the ground for a years for the past four years we tried to get a movie off the ground there were stops and starts sometimes we get very, got very close to it and it fell apart the next day and uh so now to be parted with true tv and funny or die on the movie uh it, it was a dream come true so there you go it was um i don't like either one better i think they were both very rewarding completely different experiences we'll see next year when it comes out we'll see um i think you'll like it, it we had a lot of fun making it there were a lot of huge laughs and i will say the most embarrassed i've ever been in my life number one on my list, more than anything ever in the TV show, is something that happened in the movie. And it's not even the final punishment in the movie. It's just a punishment along the way that the guys did to me. It was spectacularly embarrassing and hysterical. So, there you go. So, enjoy the movie when it comes out next year. It has to be good if it's worse than what happened with Danica McKellar. It's about a hundred times worse than that. <laughs> no joke. If that puts it in perspective. That's, I, I know it sounds like hyperbole, but I experienced it. I lived it. I'm telling you how I felt. So... Okay. Speaking of which, Danica McKellar, a uh, dear friend of ours now, she has her own book coming out on Tuesday, the same day that our book is coming out. Please go onto her Twitter feed, onto her Instagram, Facebook, and buy her book. It's a math book. It's hysterical. It's great. It's great for kids. So please make sure you buy it as well. She's a dear friend of ours. There you go. Okay. Um, Ash Lear, um, in the UK, this is pronounced Lemster, but you mm -hmm. may say Leo Minster, and it's in uh, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. um, she would like to know um, would you like Awakened to be a movie? Uh, no, no, of course. no, it's yes. terrible. Of course, of course. <laughs> the, uh, you know, when we, uh, I'm, I come from a TV background. Of course, you know, it's my job for the past twelve years has been, been in TV development, and pitching TV shows. So I was very uh, keen on developing this as a TV series or a movie after it got published. Um, the book stand on, stands on its own legs. I think if if you just like reading and don't like seeing TV shows or movies, you don't like watching them, you're going to still love the book. It is a fast-paced page-turner. And I think it stands on its own. Mm. Uh, it has its own merit as a novel. I think it's, it's very exciting and a great, fun read. Uh, and once you read it, if you do like TV shows or movies, you will immediately visualize how this can be adapted into a TV series mm. or a movie. Um, so yes, I would love to have, uh, have it as a TV series or movie. Uh, and with that in mind, uh, I, uh, we partnered with IDW Comics, which is, of course, one of the biggest comic book companies in the world. And we go out and pitch it in July. So just a few, uh, gosh, in four weeks, I go out to L.A. and pitch this as a TV series. So fingers crossed uh, we, we, we hit it. We become a bestseller. You guys love it. And fingers crossed that um, we sell as a TV series in the next month or two. There you go. Yep. Okay. Um, Chastity from uh, Jasper in Alabama. Um, she wants to know, will you do any um, book signings at Impractical Jokers shows, or do you want to keep the two projects separate? Yes, absolutely. So starting starting on Tuesday, starting from Tuesday onward, at all live Impractical Jokers shows, including starting next weekend, uh, you have the option when you buy a ticket, uh, on the ticket page when you go to your cart, you'll see that it'll, you'll give an option for an add-on to get it to, um, to meet me, to get an autographed copy of the book. Uh, if you add that feature on, you get to come after the show, uh, uh, take a photo, I'll give you a hug, get an autographed copy of the book, or if you have copies already, you can bring those in and I'll autograph those as well. Uh, starting at all live shows, starting next Friday in Richmond, Virginia. And uh, also, at all live and practical Joker shows from now to eternity, you will see Awakened at every merch table right next to all of our Impractical Jokers merchandise. So yes, you will be able to buy it, and you can also get it signed at every live show. So just go to ImpracticalJokers.com or TheTenderLoans.com, get tickets to our show, and you'll see the option to uh, add on a meet and greet with me to get a copy of the book. There you go. Okay. 
Okay, cool. In uh, a couple of minutes, we'll do one of our rapid fire um, games. Oh, I'm excited for that. That's it. we're gonna we're gonna wrap up with that at the end. We're going to do a, a game called uh, Twenty Two Questions in Two Minutes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, um, Cassandra from um, Merced in California wants to know what is your favorite ride at Disneyland. Uh, good question. One more stack, and I'm all done with these. Ugh. I've never My been to Disneyland. Ride. Well, I'll tell you what. I just, uh, my family was down in Universal Studios two days ago, so I uh, kind of spontaneously took a trip down there and went to the park with them. In Universal Studios, which I love, that's probably my fav favorite theme park, Universal Studios, my favorite ride was, uh, is The Mummy. The Mummy's so good. Oh my God, based on the movie. And they kept, they keep it from the Brendan Fraser version of The Mummy. It's like a, it's a, it's a full-blown roller coaster indoors in the bl in darkness. It's scary as hell. Really, really good. So I'm a huge roller coaster fan. I love them. Uh, so that's that. Uh, in Disney, uh, you know, it's probably the. I think they're renaming it. I don't think it's the name of the Aerosmith Rock and Roller Coaster anymore. But the Rock and Roller Coaster, where you start, it was. They might have th rethemed it now. You start flat, and you've got Aerosmith playing around you, and and the light turns from you know red to green, and you just you know one of those rides just starts horizontally. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, that's fun. Mm. That sounds good. Um, Norma from Peabody in Massachusetts. Are you a, uh, are you a roller coaster fan? Yes, I love roller coasters. You, we should go. Yeah, we should. Right. Yeah, I mean, let's I, go to Six Flags or something. I like, uh, in the UK, there's the Pepsi Max at Blackpool, which is very good, um, and the Ultimate at Lightwater Valley. Um, these are all these are all good it, ones. If if we, if I, I if I have a day off while you're still in town, you want to go to like Six, Six Flags is a big theme park uh, nearby here in New York. Do you want to go? Yeah. yeah That'd be fun. Do you do you you've got to put your hands in the air though. You're not allowed to hold the bar. You don't. T you tell me how to ride a roller coaster. You do you. I'll do me. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, also, also, I'm terrified. I, I'm going to hold on to you for dear life. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, Norma from Peabody, Massachusetts. Is the book appropriate for a 14 year old? Oh, totally. Your 14 year old is doing things you don't even want to know about. So yes, you're fine. The book is scary, but it's not. Uh, it's not super gross. As I said, mentioned before, it's psychological. It's, uh, you know, some scenes that will stick with you. Uh, your fourteen-year-olds will love it. I promise. If they like thrillers, they'll love it. It's not. Um, it's not inaccessible to you know. Uh, younger than ten, I'd be a little bit like, yeah, maybe you know. But um, read them sh parts of it. But uh, I think fourteen is totally fine. So there you go. We, we, uh, I think this is my favorite question. Actually. My nephews and nieces are smarter than I am. They're children. They're already smarter than I am uh, by far. Yeah. So there you go. I love this question. Um, this is from Brandon in Cicero in New York. Um, he wants to know, if you could be any seafood, what would it be and why? <laughs> what a crazy question. Any seafood? You know, I'm so glad you asked Brandon from, Cic from Cicero because that's the one thing I wanted, that's the one question I really wanted to get to. That's, that's at, the, at the heart of Awakened is what seafood would you be? That's what this book is about. So what, what, what seafood would you be, sir? Um, I've done, a great white shark isn't food, is it? Um, well, I'd quite like to be a, an octopus, I suppose. But oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't Stick know. with your guns. There are people that have eaten. Somebody's eaten shark. All right, great white shark. That, no, nobody's eaten great white shark. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, I would probably be um, a, a stone crab. Here's why. Because stone crabs, if, like 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 uh, you know, they don't kill the stone crab to to eat it. They take off one of the claws and then it regrows the claw, right? It regrows it and they and it still lives. Then again, they live in constant fear of getting a claw cut off. So that that might not be a good seafood to be. I don't know. I don't know what's better to still be alive or just be constantly afraid that someone's gonna come and take another limb off and you gotta regrow it again. You start back at square one. <laughs> what world are we in now? Is it just? Anyway, that was the question I was hoping we'd get to. I mean, that's the, the real, you know, you, you wanted some, some dirt, some juice, some, some really exciting stuff. That's it. Thank you, Brandon from Cicero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah Good. Dominic from uh, Wetum Park, Wetumpaka in um, Alabama. No question. Just want to say thank you um, and the rest of the crew of Impractical Jokers show. We have thoroughly enjoyed every minute. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for watching. We, we couldn't do it without you guys watching, so thank you. Oh, one thing I wanted to mention too. Before we jump into, do we have? We should, what time should we get wrapping up? In about five minutes. Okay, so we're gonna. Uh, I want to mention this, and then we'll go into this, and we'll be all wrapped up. Okay. So by the way, you can get one of these autographed copies from from uh, Darren and I by going to premiercollectibles.com, premiercollectibles.com slash awakened novel. Okay. Uh, the link is below. So, so please do that, and we will, we're signing hundreds of these today, and you'll have both of our signatures on it, which is pretty valuable. Um, if you sell it, I guess is probably valuable. So here's the thing. 
Uh, one thing I wanted to mention. So for the past two weeks, I've been doing this uh, promotion. It is an ongoing. It's super cool. If you uh, would like, you ever, if you ever wanted uh, uh, an, you know, a video message from me uh, saying happy birthday or uh, will you marry me or uh, saying happy anniversary to your parents or to your cousins or uh, wishing a happy 16th birthday to your niece or saying a shout out to your YouTube channel or what have you. If you ever wanted a personalized video message from me, here's how you can get one. Go to awakenednovel.com, awakenednovel.com, purchase a copy of Awakened right through there, set, take a screenshot of your order, and email your screenshot to awakenednovel at gmail.com, awakenednovel at gmail.com, include in your email the screenshot of your proof of purchase and the gist of what you want me to say. It could be anything, as long as it's clean and under like a minute or so. I will riff a lot. I, I improvise a lot of these. If, you, if you're if you on my social media, you've seen I've posted, I did like 500 Father's Day messages last week. It was awesome. Uh, but I pulled two all-nighters in a row to get them done in time. So I can hit deadlines. I, I'm pretty good with hitting my deadlines. So if you have a birthday or an anniversary or a, an event coming up, I can hit those deadlines as long as you include the deadline. And I will email you shortly thereafter a personalized video message to thank you, to, to say whatever you want me to say. You can send this to people as, uh, as gifts. You can, there's a, a 4th of July around the corner. I can wish the family a happy 4th of July. I can wish a you know, happy Thanksgiving, Merry Christmas, whatever you want me to say, and I will send you that personalized video message. It's pretty darn cool. So uh, go to awakenednovel.com, buy a copy of the book, email the proof of purchase to awakenednovel at gmail.com, include the gist of what you want me to say, Days later, you will get a personalized video message from me of your choosing. There you go. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. So, my friend, we're going to go into this. This is 22 questions in two minutes. I'm going to start this cleanly in case we want to use just this section for something. Okay, ready? Okay. We have not seen these questions. He's going to answer the first 11. I'm going to answer the second 11. We, and I'm going to put the clock. How long do we get? You, a, well, minute a, well, minute a minute each. A minute each, I guess, okay. right? right yeah. So, I'm going to set the clock. Uh, timer. Uh, no, what, what do I do here? Alarm. Here we go. Stopwatch. I'm going to set the timer for one minute. Okay, and I'm going to put my ringer on. One minute. Ready? Yep. you got to get through 11 questions. I'm going to start clean. Easy. Here we go. Hello, everybody. It is Murph from the TV show Impractical Jokers, here with my co-writer, Darren Weirmouth. We are the writers of the Thriller Awakened in stores this Tuesday from HarperCollins. We are going to play a game called 22 Questions in Two Minutes. We have not seen these questions. He's going to answer 11. I'm going to answer 11. You ready to go? I'm ready to go. We don't know what the questions are. You want to start? Yep. Here you go. You have one minute to answer the following questions. Ready, set, go. Where were you born? York. Who would you want to play? Who would you want to play you in a movie? Um... Come on, man! Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Who was your? What was your first job? Um, uh, British Army apprentice. What is your biggest fear? Um, Come on, man! Snakes. Snakes. Who who makes you laugh the most? You do. Hey, what is the one thing you need to have in the fridge at all times? Pepsi Max. Okay. What is your favorite adult beverage? Um, gin. Gin? Yeah. Who is the most interesting person you've met recently? Um, Twenty seconds. Um, Come on, man! Susan. Who, what is your middle name? Andrew. What is your biggest pet peeve? Um, leaving the fridge door open. You have ten seconds. Last question. What is your Starbucks order? Uh, black coffee. Nine, eight, ha, ha, done just in time with seven seconds left to go on the clock. Well done, sir. It's difficult. Isn't it? You know what? That's what you do. Okay, number, yeah. number 12 through 22. Okay. I'm going to reset. You ready to go? Yeah. I'm going to reset the clock. <laughs> uh, at, how do I do this? Cancel. One minute. Ready? Set and go. What is your favorite color? A purple. What is your guilty pleasure? Uh, sex. <laughs> Do you have any hidden talents? Uh, sex. <laughs> what color is your toothbrush? White. What is your worst habit? Worst habit? <laughs> sex. <laughs> what is your favorite cookie? Uh, uh, oatmeal raisin. Um, what, is your, what is the last album you bought or streamed? Uh, uh, last album I bought was, uh, uh, oh my God, oh my God, uh, Frankie Valley Four Seasons. What is the last gift you gave? Uh, last gift I gave was, uh, oh, she's, uh, I gave my nephew a graduation gift. Uh, I gave him a card with money in it. Okay. What cause is dear to your heart? What? What cause is dear to your heart? Dear to my heart? Mm. Uh, Make-A-Wish Foundation. What is number one on your bucket list? Bucket list? 
Oh my god! Two seconds. Uh, ch -ch -ch uh, raft of the Grand Canyon. Uh, where do you want to go that you've never been? Uh, Costa Rica. That's it. Five seconds. Yes. <laughs> I, I cheated a little bit. <laughs> oh, just in time. <laughs> Boom! I got it. Actually, I've been to Costa Rica. Damn it! I'm in Peru. Yeah, and I actually get told off for leaving the fridge door open. It's <laughs> not my pet peeve. Well, there you go. You can find Awakened in bookstores this Tuesday, June 26th, in stores all around America, and June 28th in the UK. It is a thriller unlike any other you've experienced. So check it out in stores, or go to awakenednovel.com to buy a copy, or go to harpercollins.com to get your copy today. There you go, everybody. Uh, uh, that has been fun. I hope you enjoyed it. You can still get an autographed copy of the book. Go to premiercollectibles.com slash awakenednovel, and you can order one of these signed copies that Darren and I are doing right here today. Uh, we love you. Thank you so much. Hope to see you at the Awakened Experience this weekend, and thank you so much in advance for buying a copy of our thriller, Awakened. Well done, sir. Really? You bring chicken wings to a to an island? You're out of your mind. Uh, You're out of your mind.